Let's talk about something that we often talk about on the show, uh, trans stories. They're always in the news, aren't they? They're constantly in the news. Uh, two stories today uh, which we need to be talking about. One is Keir Starmer backtracking once again. I mean, I mean basically, you know, he's climbing on and off that fence post constantly, isn't he? We're on gender self-ID uh, in Scotland. This ahead of a, a by-election in Scotland and ahead of next month when the Scottish government is going to go and take the British government to Westminster government effectively to court to challenge that decision to block the gender self-ID reform bill which would allow children as young as 16 to say yeah um yeah i'm trans and i want to be identified legally as the opposite sex that at a uh, even any uh, any medical uh, or psychological intervention let's talk to a journalist uh, debbie hayton who is um herself uh, a, a trans woman or himself debbie good jo good morning to you hey, good morning thank Julia. you very much indeed for joining us um there's another story i want to talk about which just I absolutely burst my brain today, but Keir Starmer, I mean, where does he stand on all this issue? You know, he thinks that most women don't have a penis, but 0.9, um, 0.1% do. Um, we haven't established yet, I think, about whether or not whether he thinks a trans woman is a woman. You are a trans woman and know that you are a man. You're, you're very clear about that. You've chosen to live your life as you should be, as you wish, but you know your biological reality. Um, he's, he's backtracking a bit. What has he had to say? Well, he's now saying that uh, he wouldn't have blocked the uh, dreadful Scottish reforms. You know, those reforms that needed to be blocked yeah. because they were unwise and unthought through. So it just seems to me that he's flip-flopping right, left and centre in order to say what he thinks his audience wants to hear. Yeah, and that's what we see again and again. And the key thing, they're not just unwise, these rules. These, this, this law was being pushed, you know, being pushed through at a time when we knew that there were men rapists, men who had raped women who were identifying rather conveniently after they were uh, first charged with these crimes as, as trans women, who were going to be put in, and had already been put in, in some cases, into women's jails, uh, free to rape women behind bars. And that was really part of the downfall for Nicola Sturgeon, wasn't it? Well, it was, but then the new First Minister decided that uh, Isla Bryce and Adam Graham wasn't a trans woman. He was merely at it. You know, the, it doesn't make sense and doesn't add up. And yet, and yet we're supposed to believe that anyone who says that they are uh, a different gender from one they were, what, what's, what's the phrase, assigned at birth, um, uh, that, uh, that, that we should believe them. Yeah, well, uh, unless it's politically inconvenient for uh, the authorities, it seems. Yeah, indeed, and we saw that wonderfully spluttering interview that Nicola Sturgeon did, normally so self-assured when she was First Minister, where she couldn't really answer why someone should be put into a men's prison if she believed under her 12 trans self-ID rules that this person was indeed a woman, because a trans woman was a woman. Um, we've also got a story in Wales, I'm sure you'll want to talk about this Debbie, the Welsh Labour government has been accused of prioritising woke virtue signalling after ordering public buildings to fly flags celebrating asexual and aromantic people. We'll come to that. Uh, the party's LGBTQ plus action plan calls for appropriate flags to be raised in government council and NHS buildings of underrepresented communities, including those representing bisexual, asexual and aromantic people. Um, now, I had to look this up because I wasn't quite sure. We all, I mean, I know what a gay person is, you know, gay, lesbian, right? We understand that bisexual attracted to both sexes um and uh, trans we understand what that is i don't know what trans has got to do with people's sexual attraction I, I, so i'd leave that but asexual and aromantic uh, it turns out that asexual are people who 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 who, who just who just don't you know are, are, don't have any sexual attraction to anybody and aromantics experience little or no romantic attraction but are able to enjoy sexual relationships um are these people underrepresented well, it just beggars belief that they need to raise flags for these people, <laughs> especially these aromantics, Julia. You know, people who like to have sex without forming romantic relationships. We used to look, we we never used to have flags for those people. <laughs> well, I mean, just I mean, they, they were uh, just blokes you met down the pub. Yeah, they were just people. Gone. They were just people on on dating websites. This is the thing. I mean, I had to be shown. I think we're putting the the, the flags up there, but I had to be shown these flags. Um, we've seen, you know, the rainbow flag, and then we've got the sort of the inclusive rainbow flag with the the T and the BLM and you name it, um, which I consider, by the way, to be a racist and misogynistic flag, by the way, uh, and anti-gay flag as well, uh, bizarrely, even though it's claimed by many gay people as being the most inclusive. But the asexual flag is black, grey, white and purple. The rom aromantic flag is dark green, light green, white, I mean, grey. I mean, it's just a nonsense. The whole thing is an absolute nonsense. Aromantic and asexual, they're not a thing. 
they're not a thing they're just ordinary people who may or may not fancy someone not fancy someone not fancy anybody at all uh, don't want sex do ones i mean it's meaningless why on earth why on earth have the people involved in gay rights um and even in trans rights well why have they moved into this i mean everything from the q plus for me is a nonsense it is actually making a mockery of what is important which is which is gay rights well, yes, and uh, gay people seem to be forgotten in this. They've been pushed out of their own, uh, their, their own community, their own pride organisations. This is not about gay people anymore. Uh, increasingly, it's not about trans people anymore. Yeah. It's about uh, straight people who have who want to parade something, yeah. and uh, this this sort of, this, this movement gives them a, gives them the means to do that. Uh, my complaint really is with uh, leaders, policy makers, yeah. politicians who have been asleep on the job, not done their job of, uh, of saying no to ridiculous suggestions, rather than I suspect what happens with Starmer, with Drexford in Wales, hoping that all this goes away and he doesn't have to expend any political capital on it. And don't call uh, me a, don't call me a bigot and don't call me a foe because that's what shouted out these people. But again, this thing this is taxpayers' money that will be spent ordering these flags in. Um, no doubt that organizations like Stonewall have far too much influence on in any of our public bodies uh, are sort of pushing these things. But this idea that bisexual, asexual, aromantic are underrepresented communities. A, they're not communities. B, they're not underrepresented and B, uh, the asexual and aromantic, not a thing. Yeah, and is there any evidence that asexual people, people with a low sex, sex drive, suffer any discrimination or less favourable treatment in society? Know, but the idea also, imagine, I'm thank God I'm not out there, being with my husband 20 years, thank God I'm not back out there on dating sites and I hope I never will be. The idea that you'd have someone say, yes, um, I am I am asexual or I am aromantic, I am this, I mean... I, how do people even start? I mean, how do people? It's the idea that people identify themselves in this way. That this is how. This is what I am. I mean, this is really strange. This is weird. I mean, narcissistic, self-obsessed, strange behaviour. Well, it is, isn't it? And uh, aromantics, they say, I want to have sex with you, Julia, but I don't want to form any sort of relationship with you. How on earth is that a virtue? How on earth are we defending that? I don't know. I'm, I'm no strange. I mean, I mean, we're allowed a one-night stand when we're single, aren't we? I'm, should I be saying that on air? Come on, before I was a married woman. Um, so good to talk to you, Debbie Hayton, always talking sense, that journalist, uh, Debbie Hayton.